It's known around the globe. It's the leading international sporting event, and we get the honor of experiencing it every four years. It's the Olympics. The Olympic Games hosts over 10,000 athletes from around the world across 32 different sports. Southern California athletes are no strangers to this experience. This summer, we've had numerous CIF Southern Section athletes dip their feet into the thrill of all that Team USA is. Swimmer Tegan O'Dell is about to start her senior year at Santa Margarita High School. Following CIF championships, the number two ranked recruit in the class of 2025 stayed in the pool to prepare for her next feat, traveling to Indianapolis to compete in the Olympic swim trials, something she's been striving for for years. It was definitely a lot of just experience that I gained just being there. Um, I'm sure every athlete can attest to this and and say that it was a very, you know, emotional, tired, like energetic meet. And just being there takes a lot from someone like mentally and physically. She may only be 17, but she is no stranger to the Olympic trial spotlight. My first qualifying time was when I was 14. I got my cut right before the 2021 Olympic trials and I was there. And then for this Olympic trials, it was much different for me, like experience wise and kind of just the whole atmosphere of it. And obviously like goals going into it because in 2021, I was at the very bottom. It was COVID and all that stuff. And then going into this one, I was, you know, seated top eight. Tegan competed in the women's 100 and 200 meter backstroke. Up first was the 100 back. I qualified for the semifinal. So I got to swim my first semifinal at an Olympic trials meet. And it was, it was crazy. (laughs) I remember walking out and I was just, my whole body was shaking. I feel like I was preparing myself to feel like that but like when it happened I was kind of like wow like I didn't think my body was going to be shaking like I knew I was going to be nervous but like I was getting ready to get up behind the blocks and I was just like there's 20,000 people watching me right now. She took 10th in the 100 and then came the 200. So then I took Tuesday and Wednesday to kind of just reset and you know get ready for my 200 because even just doing the 100 I was you know, I was tired. I was like, this is already a lot. And normally at meets like CIF, I'll swim four races in a day, which is something that's like normal. But when you get to trials, it's like swimming one event a day is just like a lot. Tegan made it to the finals and was the youngest in the pool. Tegan O'Dell is 17 years old, youngest in the field. I ended up eighth in the final. I had gone slower than my semis time, but faster than my prelims. So it was kind of like You know, I was a little upset, but I was able to walk away and say, you know, I tried my hardest and I just fell short this year, but I'm going to be, you know, I'm going to take this experience with me when I'm there in four years. I got so many messages from, from friends back home, from family, friends, you know, across the country. And it was like, just so nice to feel the support. It was such a surreal experience being in like the ready room with the seven other women that I was competing against because it was my first ever like really major final. Tegan took in memorable moments that she will carry with her throughout her career. The veterans are more comfortable in the ready room than the young girls that are competing. People like Phoebe Bacon, who actually made the team in the surrender back, she would try to like loosen everyone up and just like have everyone keep calm by like asking people questions about just stuff that's not even swimming related. And and so it's kind of good to see and carry that with me to when I go to lower level meets and I'm in the ready room and, and there might be some really stressed out girls and I can just, you know, make conversation with them. That's, that's not gonna, you know, make them more nervous or, or something like that. Also in Indy was Quinn Sider. Quinn walked across the graduation stage at Nordoff High School in May. Before he heads to college to continue his swim career, he took a flight to his first Olympic trial, joining Tegan in Indy. We knew at the start of this year that I wanted to try and qualify for trials. That was the, that was the big goal. Actually, that had been my goal from two years prior. I remember sophomore year, we got a questionnaire and one of them was like, what are your goals by the time that you graduate? My goal was to qualify for Olympic trials before I graduate my senior year. Quinn competed in the 100 meter freestyle. Unfortunately, I got sick at the trials. So I didn't quite have the performance I was looking for, but I got to have the experience of going to trials and it's really incredible because 
I've never been to a meet that is so dedicated on trying to allow the athletes to have a great performance. It was really, really cool. Several more current high school athletes joined the path to Team USA this year, including Class of 2025 Ventura runner Sadie Englehart, who attended track and field trials. Class of 2024 J. Sarah water polo player Ryder Dodd, along with his brother Chase, who played for Huntington Beach, both made the men's water polo team. Making his Olympic debut, one of four Long Beach natives on the team from UCLA, Chase Dodd. Number 11, the youngest member of the team, Ryder Dodd. Another recent Southern Section graduate, Emily Osmus, made her way to Paris as a member of the women's water polo team. Up next, another Olympic debut, the youngest member of this roster, just 18 years old, Emily Osmus. Emily graduated from Martin Luther King High School in 2023. And since graduating, she's been preparing for this career milestone. The process of going from high school to let me go on your own to be an athlete, I think that was something that I had to adjust to. Everybody on our team, plus, so there was 18 of us that started um, three, so like right when I graduated. And then either you take a year off of school or and we have a full year of training together. And then um, about a year later, at the end of the 13 roster. Emily joins a team of notable veterans, including Maggie Steffens, Maddie Musselman, Rachel Fatal, and Ashley Johnson. I think veterans have really helped us young ones to really dive into this culture and know that this process of this full year of training is going to be worth it in the end. Growing as a as a player, but also as a person, building that connection with each other, I think is something that the veterans have really instilled and in knowing that I can do it. And even drawing inspiration from like Maggie and Maddie. Emily says her drive to get to this point came at a young age, but it's never too late to push for your goals. As a young athlete, I think drawing inspiration from Team USA or even people that are playing in the CIF games. And I think inspiration and taking that inspiration and using that as fuel to work hard every day. Additionally, the Olympics wouldn't be possible without officials. One of our very own Southern Section water polo officials will be taking the big stage as the first U.S. female to do so. We have had um, quite a few females come through the international system. There's been probably five or six um, that have gone to world championships and kind of been at that elite level um, to have the opportunity. But when it's come down to who's being chosen for the Olympics, it's, it's never been a female. There are 24 water polo officials for the 2024 Paris Games, and Jen McCall is one of seven females on this roster. Gaining the experience to prepare for a job of this kind takes a lot of commitment to the sport. The entire career of refing is a tryout. Um, so we, we start, obviously, with the younger age groups, high school, um, and kind of get seen in that area and then start to do collegiate. We have an international list, which used to be seven, now is 10. Um, and so once we're one of the 10 of the United States, we can be chosen for any of our international competitions. With a large handful of Team USA water polo members being from Southern California, Jen looks forward to seeing the familiar faces take the pool. It's always awesome to see kids like from like a super young age, you know, and be like, oh, if they're 10 and under game and now, you know, they're competing on the biggest stage. So it's always fun. And, you know, they've seen me just the same. Watching and learning about the journey of student athletes right here in our community striving to represent our country is beyond impressive. The 2024 Paris Olympic teams are composed of dozens of Southern Section alumni, and we will be locked in cheering them on. With the summer of 2028 Olympics being held right here in our backyards, it'll be exciting to see our local talent take the stage. But in the meantime, Paris 2024, here comes Southern California.